we've, we've done it. Uh, we're gathered here today to once again talk about some wrestling that oh, yeah. Kylan and I watched on, on a, AEW Dynamite. On a podcast we still haven't come up with a name for. Perhaps we'll keep it that way. Who's to say? Yeah, uh, names are overrated. <laughs> names are overrated. Uh, so, this would have been a W Dynamite of, what was it, the 29th? I believe that's correct. It was, yeah. It was late July regardless. July. It was the 29th. Yes. So, the start off pretty quick. Uh, we immediately lead into the Inner Circle versus Best Friends and Jurassic Express match. Best Friends and Friends, as <laughs> they prefer to be called. Whatever. Um, Ten man match. What would you, what was your experience with this match? It was not as, I expected more out of it, mm-hmm. but also I probably shouldn't have because it's, ten, it's a 10 man match. It's obviously going to be pretty uh, crowded and insane. And I was, I don't know what I was expecting, but yeah. Yeah, th- there's a point pretty early into the match where, they all just decide, hey, what's a tag team? And they all just they all just rush in, and it's just all... Aubrey can't stop just them. Sort of, just sort of piling on. Yeah. I don't know. There, there's a point where Luchasaurus's mask just starts to yeah, fall. Yeah, and he keeps point. having to put it back on. They, they cut away, and he's, like, in the corner, um, which, is, which is different from a normal, like, a Lucha person getting their mask taken off, because yeah. that's supposed to be his actual face. Um <laughs> His, he's losing his face. So he literally, his, his dinosaur scales fell off mid-match. It was very disturbing. Uh, I can't I, believe Jake Hager did that to him. I can't believe Tony Khan allowed that on television. <laughs> but uh, there's a point where, yeah, say uh, Luchasaurus and Hager, though, before that mat, that mask started to fall off, I thought they were having pretty good, yeah. good go. Um, good two big man just mm-hmm. throwing punches. Probably, I don't know, probably the best part in it, because I think after that, there's a... Yeah, directly after they have their scuffle, the mask starts to fall mm-hmm. off. It goes in the like a corner to like glue his face back on, I guess. Was your favorite part not when everyone hit their finishers in a span yeah, that, of thirty yeah. seconds? That was what I was about to bring up because that happens <laughs> directly after because he's fixing yeah. the mask as that happens. Where one one of the best friends and friends will run in, and one of the inner circle people will go, and someone will do their finisher, and then the other team will run in and hit their finisher yeah. person. And it just like all ten of them hit their finish. All ten of them just had a nice little go, um, and it eventually all ended. Um, we think uh, so. Luchasaurus is down, and Sammy Sammy Guevara is going for the. He's getting on the rope. He's going for the shooting. His, uh, press. Well, he's doing the shooting star of the six forty or whatever. That well, is. I guess it's it's impossible to know. Yeah, he couldn't do it. He gets. Matt Hardy, out of nowhere, uh, grabs him by the leg and just sort of pulls him down. Doesn't really, like, hit him, but, you know, just sort of... Well, then, he, him. then he pushes him. Yeah. I think right into a choke music slam. also starts, but... It does, because uh, Sammy looked up and was like, what's going on? Just watching, and no one comes out. And then Matt Hardy pulls him down and pushes him straight into a choke slam. Great Sammy gets pinned. Sammy takes another massive hit, because uh, that's his job in the company, is to just get destroyed. And he gets pinned. Lucha pins him. Lucha Source pins him. Uh, that's the match. Uh, all the all the best friends and friends hold their arms up in victory, while Matt Hardy just sort of <laughs> walks away, like pointing, "I'm not done with you," at Sammy Guevara. Which I get. This is advancing a story, but man, at some point, I want Sammy to stop taking pins as much. He never will. Perhaps He'll always he get pinned. Push. He he always gets hurt. Uh, we skipped over also one part I thought was wonderful. Best friends and friends are in the ring. The inner circle is all outside, and they start to coalesce for the the you know patented hug, you mm-hmm. know where Excalibur would normally yell. You got to give the people what you want, what they want. And Sammy decides to jump in the middle of it, <laughs> <laughs> and they all surround him, and he gets beat up. Sammy makes the worst decision he's ever made. Was it though? <laughs> Sammy makes a bad decision. <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. Sammy. Uh, yeah. He's never gonna recover from anything that happens to him. Uh, he, keeps, he gets hit by a a golf cart. He gets thrown off a stadium. 
and he still keeps coming. He's a trooper. He keeps showing back up, and they keep saying it. They're trying to get rid of him. <laughs> They're like, we You'll thought he would after this. We chased him with a horse. What a hero, that Sammy. Uh, so next we go to, there's a Moxley promo, kind of a short one. Mm. He basically, I don't know. He does his thing, you know. I don't start fights, but I finish them. Uh, you know, he's a tough guy. Page, All that stuff. You know, and me and uh, me and Darby are going to get you guys. That Just that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we get into, I would... The TNT title. The TNT title match, Cody versus Warhorse, which I would probably say was match the Knights. I think I preferred a different one. I thought it was a good match, but mm-hmm. I, I think I preferred the uh, either the one of the two later tag matches. Mm-hmm. I think I, those are my two favorites. I agree that those two are up there as well. But I think this is a great match. Uh, I think they do a good job of putting up Warhorse, who I didn't really know who he was before, other than I knew a bunch of people liked him. So, yeah. I mean, I knew people on Twitter were clamoring for it. Uh, he's apparently, or was at one point, I can't remember – He's the independent uh, wrestling champion for IWTV, which is apparently a pretty big wrestling organization. So you know, oh, he's got an interesting gimmick, a uh, pretty cool uh, look. He, I think he was banging his head a little too much. I disagree entirely. More head banging, more horse. Bring that back. So <laughs> he has a lot of cool moves too for someone that. Yeah. Well, I say cool reversals. Hmm. A lot of cool reversals. Yeah, so he, he reverses at one point. Cody starts to put him in a figure four leg, leg lock, and he just sort of flips around and just reverses it so he has it on Cody, which was like – He uh, immediately does it. Immediately. No waiting around his yeah. – immediately. Which confuses me because that's how the match ends. So maybe he just couldn't flip around that time. Well, his leg kept getting hurt because they kept focusing on that, that which is the same thing they did last week at the Eddie Kingston match yeah. where Cody, you know, keying in on one – part of the opponent uh so there's also a thing where he counters a sunset flip so like cody goes over him to to uh, do a pin and he just sits on he just sits down on cody for the pin for the pin which i thought was great uh but yeah i thought it was a great match he has this really he also has another good move where he he has this ridiculous jump it seems like he goes super far up for just a elbow oh that was that was a nice throwback elbow drop big fan we need more tasty elbow drops because I feel like everyone's doing flips and really just an elbow in the stomach will do you, I would I think. I think that hurts more than flipping and just or landing probably on would. <laughs> Yeah. But um, it's wrestling. It doesn't matter. Uh, so Cody does get the submission on Warhorse. He taps to the figure four leg lock. Uh, Cody's music plays. And he starts to gesture for Warhorse to get up. Warhorse gets up. It looks like they're about to, you know, hug or shake hands or whatever. Um, but then, oh, no, the, no, John oh, no. Silver and Alex Reynolds, <laughs> the two jobbers of the Dark Order, the heroes of the company, the fuck ups. <laughs> they, they, they keep trying to get Jungle Boy to join, but it ends up being Griff Garrison. Except for, wait, did you watch the BTE? Oh, yeah, yeah. Out? It wasn't Griff Garrison. It wasn't. That was Jungle Boy that time. But, um, <laughs> They come out. Um, Warhorse, very cool, like pushes Cody out of the way because yeah. Cody's he, not looking towards them. So he pushes he gets some away. punches in. He gets a, yeah, he gets a couple hits in, but then they sort of beat him up, push him out of the ring. It's two on one. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going to uh, get beat. And it's two on one, and uh, both of the people are beat up from their match. So, mm-hmm. obviously, I think even Cody would probably lose to, <laughs> to Alex Reynolds and John Silver <laughs> after that match. Uh, so he starts getting he starts getting pummeled, uh, and then we get a debut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt, Matt Cardona, Matt. formerly known as Zack Ryder in WWE, which I haven't watched. Mm-hmm. You know, like we talked about last episode, I haven't watched him like WWE in ten or fifteen years. But I had I, heard of him. I briefly remember him. Like I, I, I don't think I was there for when he was sort of a big deal, but mm-hmm. I remember him like kind of. He was just sort of there. From what um, I've read, he was super over with the fans. Mm-hmm. So uh, he he eventually, I think with oh, what was his name, Kurt Hawkins. He was a he was a tag team champ mm-hmm. a couple times on Raw, and he had a couple of different titles. So definitely a big deal. Uh, he yeah. rolls up and obliterates 
John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Those two sad people uh, who were there for maybe maybe that's an angle they're going for Dark Order against Cody, but seemingly just sort of popped in to beat him up for yeah. no reason. Well, maybe they're going against the elite as a whole, but Cody doesn't feel like he's part of the elite anymore, really. Yeah, because because it's not. And again, maybe this is just so they could debut Matt Cordona, but no one comes to save him. Um, yeah. And he's getting beat up for like a minute. Uh, so. There's no Kenny yeah, Hangman. No Young Bucks. There's no Dustin Rhodes. Where's he? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> That's your brother. Maybe he just wasn't there that day, or he was yeah. hastily putting on his face makeup because he can't go out there. Gotta get on there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Cody is saved. We then go on to an inner circle promo uh, who have just lost a match, not like two scenes earlier, but they roll out seemingly fine. Usually after a match, everyone's like, oh, 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 oh but they're just kind of fine. Yeah. Um, but Jericho's like, everyone shut up. <laughs> Stop playing the music. Shut up. Uh, Jericho yelling at people gets me every time. He's so good. It he happens every yelling. episode. He starts yelling. I think, I don't know if he was yelling at the crowd in general, but the camera looks at the gun, like the two younger of the the gun family. Gun. Yeah. Uh, and he's just like, you're every week and you suck, or something like that. I don't know. He's just yelling at the crowd. Uh, and he reveals, he has a couple of interesting reveals about the Orange Cassidy uh, feud, which he had said previously was over. Um, he brought it back. He brings it well, back. He said, he said like a week ago he was bringing it back. Yeah, because he got the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But his seven thousand dollar check. <laughs> he so he make he makes two two uh, offers. Not really offers. He just says they're gonna happen. So I assume George yeah. Cassidy just accepts. But um, he first says there's going to be an August twelfth rematch with Orange Cassidy, wherein if Orange Cassidy loses, he has to pay Jericho seven thousand dollars for the jacket. <laughs> That he ruined. He keeps wearing it. <laughs> at I some point, you would. Uh, he has other point. jackets. We've seen him in them. Yeah, he has other seven thousand dollars jackets. He is a millionaire. It's true. He's got so much money. Um, and he also challenges Orange Cassidy to an August fifth debate, um, <laughs> with a guest. Uh, Moderator. Which? Three guest. Yeah, yeah. According to the comments under the tweets and Reddit. Spoilers. spoilers. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to wait like five seconds, so if you don't want to know, fast forward. Spoilers. Eric Bischoff. Ooh, okay. Bringing him back from the dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which? Interesting. That would be fun. Just don't let him run the company, because WCW. (laughs) It doesn't go well, yeah. But you know, it'll be it'll be a fun time. It'll be a fun time, given that we know, at least according to Chris Jericho, that Chris Jericho is one of the greatest orators of our time. <laughs> so true. <laughs> he is a really good commentator, but I don't know about that one. We then cut to another promo. Uh, I don't know if this one. I'm. Is it a promo or just a scene? Because a promo is when they like come out and they're speaking to like the crowd, right? I mean, I guess she was technically speaking to a crowd. She had the uh, microphone. Yeah. Because Tony keeps giving it to her. He knows what's going to happen, and he just keeps doing it. He just keeps doing it. Gosh, I love that friendship blossoming on Dynamite. Beautiful. So go on. Yeah, so Britt Baker's like, uh, Big Swole, I'll give you a match at, I'm assuming All Out, because she said she'd be back for them. Mm Mm-hmm. But you have to be someone of my choosing. So we don't know who that's going to be. As always, Britt Baker is amazing because really great on the mic. She's very good. Yeah. I enjoy her quite a bit. Of the women, best character work, I think, easily. Uh, I assume what's going to happen here is obviously Big Swole's going to roll over whoever she put yeah. up for Britt Baker to fight. It'll be Reba or Rebel. Reba or Rebel. Maybe both. Yeah. Um, both. And then, It'll be like a Mick Foley situation. And then hopefully Britt Baker's recovered because yeah. she is definitely one of the best wrestlers that they have, although she's been injured for months. 
So, man, they got they had her and Chris Statlander get injured back to that. Yeah, that was pretty That's, rough. Yeah. Um, but uh, as maybe we'll we'll talk about later, um, the tag team tournament, the women's tag team tournament, is going pretty well. I mean, yeah. why don't we just talk about it now? I mean, this we can do that because I mean they mentioned it during. They probably talked about it right after that. Yeah. So the women's tag team tournament actually started Monday, which is the day of recording this. Um, hopefully it's out by Tuesday before Wednesday Dynamite. But um, the it was two matches that they released on YouTube. Uh, we'll just really quickly go through them. The first one was the Nightmare the, Sisters. Yeah. Versus, Allie and Brandy. Allie and Brandy versus... Penelope Ford and Mel. Penelope Ford and Mel. Uh, I thought it was a really good match. Uh, yeah. Brandy and Allie are pretty good. I think Allie, of the, of the group, I think Penelope Ford and Allie are definitely the better wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. I um, think Penelope Ford's the best one there. By bar. I, she's improved a lot just since I've been watching. Yeah. And um, then Allie seems pretty good as well. Allie's pretty good. Brandy, I think, is better on the mic, but she's decent. Mm, she's improving. I mean, yeah. I don't think she's, she's not bad. been a wrestler that long, so okay. she's just getting better. She gets and more experience. Then, Mel, uh, because we didn't start watching this until what, like January of this year? Or no, this is later? we watched late February. Okay, yeah, because we started right. We got like two episodes before they banned crowds. I have no idea what Mel was doing, yeah. other than the brief bits I've read. She was in some sort of nightmare th- collective thing that they cut because everyone hated with Brandy, but it broke up because everyone hated them. So I we didn't know. I didn't know anything about yeah. her ability. I think she was in a dark match that I've seen, but yeah. Um, she seemed fine. I like to, okay. uh, like taller. Um, mm-hmm. and she seems tough. There was one, there's one move where when they're outside the ring and she just like gives a big boot to Allie and it just QT like, crum- it just she also did one to QT Marshall, right? I think she also she did. So, but uh, she's back. He doesn't have COVID anymore. That's good. He doesn't have COVID anymore. Woo. But, um, it was a good match, um, but you kind of tell. It's kind of sad that Penelope Ford was out so early. Um, yeah. Again, well, I think they're the best, but. with the next match. I think they're doing like the main single stars. Mm-hmm. It seems they're pairing them up with people who are newer, and they're just going to have the newer people get pinned. Yeah. Because, I mean, Penelope Ford, they don't really want her in a tag team. I don't think. I think they want her to do mm-hmm. solo stuff. And same thing with Nyla Rose. Which moves us into the next one, Nyla Rose and. What was her Arian, Ariana? Uh, or I'm gonna look at the notes you sent me. Shoot, I already forgot. Arian <laughs> Andrew. Arian Andrew. Nothing gets her. Um, I think I also wrote some. Yeah. So she hasn't wrestled for like four years. She was in WWE. I'm not really sure how well she did there, but yeah, she stopped wrestling for them in 2016. So it's been a while for her. Um, and just as a weird little trivia bit that I saw on Wikipedia, she was she's a behavioral therapist for autistic children, um, which is cool. Pretty, yeah. Uh, but but anyway, uh, the, the the it doesn't. There's a promo later uh, during the episode of Dynamite where Nyla Rose gets her as her partner, but it doesn't explain who she is. She's just like, yeah. that's right, it's me. And we're like, who? Um, I was like, I haven't watched wrestling in a long time. I have no idea. I haven't watched wrestling, and she doesn't have the same name that she had in WWE, so I don't know who her character is. Um, But anyway, she's there. She's with Nyla Rose. Um, She seems okay. Um, She she seems just the right kind of like annoying heel. Mm -hmm. It's like, shut up. (laughs) But but it's like, it's not so bad that I don't want to watch. Like, I think it's almost at that level where I'm, annoyed that it takes me out of it but she seemed pretty good i thought i think she was the perfect fit for someone for nyla to not to be like i want out of this tournament yes so they're fighting against anna J of the dark order the dark order comes out with her which i thought was yeah. pretty cool um which she was quarantined because i think she goes to qt marshall's wrestling school so yeah that's why she hadn't been on in a while and tay conti who was this her debut i believe yeah yeah so this is her debut um, Which I think she's one of the ones who WWE cut, like, in okay. April. Okay. So, maybe yeah. they're picking her up full-time. I mean, they gave her a match win, so. Yeah. So, pretty, again, pretty good match. Uh, Tay Conti and Anna Jay uh, target Nyla Rose's legs. And eventually they get the pin. Pretty cool pin, I thought, on what's-her-face. 
Ariane Andrew. I'm gonna call her Andrew because I keep forgetting how to say Ariane. Um, not Ariane. <laughs> Ariane. <laughs> she gets pinned. Um, so it was a pretty cool like neck snap move. I don't really know what to call that because it was on the ground, but very cool move. Uh, Nyla doesn't care. <laughs> Nyla doesn't care at all. Um, she's like, okay, we're Audi. Her and Vicky Vicky's Guerrero. Yelling. Vicky Guerrero's there. Yeah, they just they just abandon her. Um, well, they beat her up first. They, yeah, they go in, they beat her up, then they leave. And I actually think Tay Conti picks up Andrew yeah. after, which is nice. I don't know if that, maybe they have some sort of previous wrestling thing going on. Maybe. Or they're just friends in real life. But I thought, obviously, Nia was one of their best mm-hmm. on the women's roster. I thought both Anna Jay and Tay Conti looked pretty good. They looked very good, yeah. yeah. So hopefully we're getting more depth to the women's roster, which was fine before, but then people got hurt, so it's kind of... And the uh, <laughs> travel restrictions, they have several people in other countries. Sad. But that gets us through that. Um, let's see. What else is there to talk about? Oh, uh, Sheeta Diamante. Sheeta Diamante, another women's match. This did not take place. This is just a one-on-one on Dynamite. Uh, I thought this was a pretty good match. There was like one mistake where Diamante went for a roll-up that kind of failed, and they hit the ropes, and it was... It just kind of, well, they had to then just, like, roll away from each other. From what I've seen, Sheeta doesn't have bad matches. She doesn't have bad matches. Yeah. And I don't think any, I've seen three of Diamantes. I think one was on Dark, and she's had two Dynamite matches yeah. so far. So she had the Dark one then, Evil East, and now Sheeta. Yeah. Um, she's solid. She seems pretty good. I would like it. Have they signed her? I can't keep I would track. assume. I can't keep because track. Because they've given her Yeah. I don't think they've officially announced it, but I'd assume she's getting signed with yeah. having th- given her a two lot matches on Dynamite. Yeah, and she's in the tag tournament because yeah, they've had her in the promotions. She's she's in the tag tournament with Eva Lise. Yeah, uh, but that will take place next Monday. Uh, but yeah, pretty good match. Um, Diamante looks good. She actually kicks out of that like suplex move that the Falcon Arrow, the Falcon Arrow that she has. But then she just immediately kills her with the running knee <laughs> and kids her. But she uh, she's showing that she she has some ability there. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in kayfabe and in real ability. <laughs> um, let's see. Kylan, I think you may have skipped a couple things. What did we skip? Uh, Who went FDR from contract. the Britt Baker? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I skipped right over that. It's fine. Uh, we, we just have a list. Yeah, yeah. You can't see that. I don't know why I'm holding it up. It's on mine because Eli sent it to me. Yeah. Ha ha. So... We'll talk through the FDR contract. So there's a brief scene where, for some reason, FDR hasn't apparently hasn't yeah. signed. They were point. wrestling as free agents before. It's like legitimately. Yeah. Oh. They had not signed because they were still feeling it out to see what oh, was going I like on. That. I didn't actually know that. Yeah. Uh, I read, I think it was a Forbes article that I was reading on it. Okay. So, Which obviously they weren't going to give them the titles until they actually signed. That'd be ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so. They, they're doing their little signing. Uh, Tony Chavone's Sh- there. A couple other business people. Who knows what who they yeah. are? Um, but they're like, before we sign this, we want a tag team consultant, a tag team specialist to come in here. Uh, so they Arn Anderson uh, swaggers his old body into the room, and he sits down and he looks through the the things, and they're like. Yeah, we want we want we want the tag rope, but just but just for, for us. Which is, just, I get that they're like <laughs> old school. We want the rules, but you're making yourself do a rule that no one else has to. <laughs> but I also, I think part of it is that they still cheat behind the ref's back. They totally but they don't. Do. They don't do it in front of the ref. Yeah, they, they don't follow the ref. cheat. Yeah, they, they wait until the ref turns, which is pretty funny. I think. So he he looks through it, um, and at one point he says, and also, and then he, like, whispers to them, and I don't know if that was anything meant to mean anything. Yeah, I'm thinking some, yeah. some four horsemen. Four horsemen stuff, especially since he was already there just to begin with. His yeah. presence, I think, ties the four horsemen thing together. But uh, the whispering may be something. It may be not be something. Um, they may be messing with us because they know everyone thinks this. Yeah. Uh, they... They sign the papers. Uh, Hangman Adam Page comes in. He 
gets four shot glasses out. Arn Anderson declines. So he was like, "This one was for you, Tony." But Arn's here, so we'll give it to him. <laughs> and he he gives shots to uh, Dax and Cash, which I believe are the FTR names. Yeah, yeah, Cash and, Wheeler and Dax Hartwood. And then he fills up his entire shot glass to the very top <laughs> with the I, other one. He it's like a massive glass of whiskey. Which he then just downs. Well, he gets halfway in and he's like, "This is a, I poured too much," and then they're like, just like, "They're like, do it." Uh, and then which the I like to think, mm-hmm. I like to think that was not planned. That he actually had too much and didn't want to do it, and they just peer pressured him on he's camera. Like, Keep going. <laughs> How did he do his match later? Um, also important to mention, uh, a part a part of their contract was that they get to hold a tag team appreciation night. Is that this? Which I think means the 15th or? The 12th. The 12th. Okay. Yeah. So the same, which, the same time as the debate then, right? With Orange Cassidy? The debate's this week. Okay. So the, the Orange Cassidy Jericho rematch yeah. is also tag team appreciation night. Which I think that'll be a good time. I agree. Uh, I'm, I'm liking FTR more and more. As I like along. FTR a lot too. They're really good on Twitter too. I should follow them. Yeah, yeah, you gotta follow them. Gotta follow those boys. So then we move into the tag title defense. So Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page versus the Dark Orders, uh, Stu Grayson and Evil Uno. We get Colt Cabana on commentary, which is absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful. Uh, Anna Jay also shows up, I think, just to remind everyone that she's alive. (laughs) Uh, It is. From the way, based on the tag team tournament, she's not in the Dark Order. Like she's like Colt, just hanging out with them, not officially a member. It is, yeah, because they have a brief uh, interview after they win the match you know, for the women's tournament, and she's like, "I don't want to talk about the Dark Order. Let's just yeah. talk about this." <laughs> um, which, yeah, uh, I feel like she's in it more than Colt is, but yeah, yeah I, I mean, we're both sort of in that same boat. She didn't come out to her own music, or she did, but she had them come out with her for that match, and she's changed her uh, outfit, mm-hmm. and she wears that weird mask thing. Which sucks, because I liked her other outfit, but whatever. Colt um, better not change his. Colt would never change. <laughs> I love his outfit. I don't know why it is the way that it is but it looks great. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I think it's a pretty great match. There are a lot of good, yeah. pretty, it's like just a solid, I don't really see, I didn't see any mistakes in it really. Right. Um, there was that one time when Stu Grayson just yeeted over the, uh, he just the, disappeared into the cosmos. <laughs> which from what I was reading, people thought that was a mistake from the camera because they think he jumped onto Hangman outside of the ring there. Mm-hmm. And they just didn't catch it with the uh, camera. Uh, work. Okay. So it wasn't just him jumping for no reason. Because, yeah, yeah, there, there's a point where he sort of jumps at a, at a turn, turn post. Yeah, because um, Kenny threw him into the it. camera. Yeah. So you just see him just, he's gone. It just seems like he just sails out of view, um, which I've, yeah, so it's good to hear that the camera just didn't catch it because I thought he had made a mistake and was hurt because he just yeah. goes. I thought he was hurt too because I was like, he just flew out of the ring. He just flew away. <laughs> I hope it happened, but I don't think it did. Uh, there's there's a good point where Evil Uno catches Kenny's Kenny Omega's leg, and he hands it to Rick Knox, the ref, who's just like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> and then he hits a neck breaker, and the commentary from Colt and uh, oh, who else was it? Was it Taz? Maybe Taz are like, oh, I can't believe he did that to Rick Knox. <laughs> Uh, Taz is, I like Taz on commentary. Taz is very funny. Obviously, Miss Excalibur, but Taz is good. Uh, the match finishes with a terrible, painful combo of a Snapdragon, then a V Trigger, and then a V Trigger, V Trigger Buckshot combo on the, the last call. The last call, as they call it. Yeah. Uh, so Evil Uno is dead. They they get the pin, and we're all like, "Woo! They defended it." Also, um, his size, I was impressed when Evil Uno did a uh, a swanton. Oh, yeah. I was like, dang. Also, he's apparently lost like 30 pounds oh, yeah, yeah, during yeah. all this. Uh, 
he didn't do it Twitch streaming, but I did watch him stream on Twitch, uh, which is very funny. Uh, everyone check out Evil Uno's Twitch stream where he plays video games. One of my favorite things that I saw during the pandemic was him playing some random video game, but he's got like a cardigan on and his mask. And someone in his chat goes, what nationality is Evil Uno? And he goes, Evil, e Evil Uno is Canadian. <laughs> It's like he's still in character, but he isn't. I don't. Yeah. Know. I don't know. But yeah, but they lose. They, they crumble, crumble out. out the to Brody, Mister Brody Lee hits Evil Uno in the face with the stack of paper. Really, the greatest finisher that AEW has ever seen. No he, one can recover. He ushers Colt and Anna J to mm -hmm. you know the backstage area. To see. Yeah, yeah. And then he releases. The the nobodies. The goons. The the people that there's some dark order people that we don't even know about that are just in they just have like button up shirts. And These like, are the people Lance Archer throws around before matches. Exactly. Putting on suits and masks. They're getting their money's worth. <laughs> so the young bucks are also in the ring. It, before before all the goons surrounded, the young bucks came out of the stands and like helped out. So they're fighting off all these goons, and then FTR out of nowhere come in. They hit, they hit Brody Lee with like an ice chest or a cooler, the styrofoam cooler that just like which crumbles and ice flies everywhere. They keep having to replace those. Brody Lee is down. Uh, then they all they fight off all the goons, um, and then in classic Tony Khan fashion, we immediately hear that there's a six v six next week. <laughs> They're really just one opening the 5v5 from this week. Mm -hmm. So I, I can only expect on the tag team appreciation night, there's going to be a 14-man tag. I certainly but, hope so. Yeah, they just got to keep going. And I assume in a month or two, the entire roster will be out. Just yeah. a full brawl. It's going to be uh, wonderful. So yeah, it's the Elite and FTR versus the Dark Order and Colt Cabana. I don't know exactly who is going to be. I assume it's Uno, Stu uh, Grayson, Brody Lee. And um, Alan Angles. Alan Angles. Yeah. Okay. And well, is that six? That's Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, Brody Lee, Alan Angels. Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana. And then I guess one of the, the Beaver Boys. There's another one. It's not John Silver or... Well, Preston Vance, but is it... Oh, it's, it is Preston Vance. Injured? He's back. I think he's back now. No injured anymore? Yeah, I think he's oh. good. Okay. Cool. I think he had... Yeah, he had arm surgery for realsies. Okay. Well, I'd love to see him back, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. I, I don't know if they've announced that. That might be on their Twitter. Um, but they announced it after the match, at least. I don't know yeah, if yeah. the group from the Dark Order is going to be in there. I'll look it up real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull that up while I... Okay, so I'm looking at it. I'm just looking at the picture. I'm pretty sure that's Preston Vance in the background. Oh, cool. So screw because, the boys. Yeah, yeah. The other two are they're in a different match next week. They're in a classic match next week. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what else. So we only have two more things left. Uh, we have the MJF State of Wrestling address, which was just was pure beauty. Um, MJF is, I think, the best speaker that they have. I think overall he is the best talent they have. Yes. He, so he comes out to his music, but there's like all these people around. He's shaking hands like he's a presidential candidate. He's kissing. There's Wardlow. There's Lee Johnson from Dark. He, he kisses a, like a plastic, like a fake baby. And then he immediately like rinses his mouth out, <laughs> which is fantastic. So he comes out, he's doing all of this. He's got a podium in the, in the ring. With a, uh, there's a seal on it. With that, which has like a lion, I think. Classic. I think it's his new seal, I guess. I don't know. But it is kind of confusing. So basically his whole thing is just like, we need to change the culture. And uh, I don't know why I'm talking like that, because that's not how he talks. But he says, we need to change the culture at AEW. Um, Moxley is the one letting all this flippy crap happen. Yeah. Um, all that kind of crap. Uh which is funny because Moxley doesn't do flippy crap. It is confusing because A, Moxley doesn't do any of that. So you would think if he was influencing things, he would promote more loners who don't do flippy stuff. But two, 
clearly Moxley isn't isn't actually in control of all that. Uh, but whatever, I guess. Well, he can't go after Cody again. He's already he's already pinned him. He's already done that. So, I guess the only one left. Yeah. Which I mean, now who else in AEW hates flippy crap? FTR. Four Horsemen. <laughs> I don't think MJF will be a Horseman by the end of it. It'll be twenty Horsemen. Yes, ten v ten match. Four Orange horsemen. Cassidy leaves best friends and joins the Horsemen. So. I thought it was great. Um, he also challenges the AEW champion, which he says Moxley, and I assume will still be Moxley. Yeah. But there are also other AEW challenges for the for the championship before that takes place. So it is possible that Moxley could not be the champion, which yeah. would then sort of invalidate the whole <laughs> challenge. So I I doubt it's it's going to be Moxley. it's going to be Moxley. But the only thing I had a problem with, I think they. The first time they did this, I was okay with it, but they've been doing it a few more times. They keep mentioning ratings, um, mm-hmm. which I don't know. It's like, I, get I think they're, they're new and that is important to them. Yeah. But at a certain point, I think you just have to be like, okay, we're doing fine. Mm-hmm. I they, think it fits in with MJF's character at least. Yeah. And then Jericho's made it into a meme and MJF is just like. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with Jericho because he's the demo god and he's so into himself. Yeah. Uh, which I guess, which, in, which I think it's a similar thing with MJF. Yeah. As long as they don't need to bring it up very often, but every now and then, just doing I'm it is yeah. Every now and then, but I feel like it's been like two, three weeks in a row that they've mentioned rating. Yeah. Well, they keep losing the fifty plus. Sad. Um, That's why they have fifty plus seconds for fifty plus on <laughs> TV now. Uh, but then you know that ends. So we get the the coveted and. Twice promoted, I think at this point, uh, no DQ tornado tag match between Darby and Mox and Cajun Starks, yeah. uh, which first starts out. There's another promo, uh, Cajun Starks and Taz. I'll do a little promo. Well, before that, Moxley comes out and right. then Darby doesn't. So Darby's music, music plays. No one comes out. It's like, well, it's going to be a uh, two on one. Which I then still think the- <laughs> Mox maybe could have won because he's crazy, but. Yeah, so Darby doesn't come out. Man, Hooch is crazy. <laughs> so Hooch is crazy. So Stark starts like, he has some things where he's like, Darby smells or something. He's like, Darby looks like Pigpen and wrestles like a crash course dummy. Uh, and they're like, we're going to get you, Mox, now that we've got you all alone. Um, which I feel like would invalidate the match. I don't really see why that makes it to where Mox just has to fight two people. But I think they just want to beat him up. Yeah, but doesn't everyone have to be in the ring for a match to start? Yes, but I guess at that point they would just change it to a two of you. Tony Khan can do whatever sure. he wants. Tony Khan's yeah. a bad man. Um, he could have called 14 matches right then and there. Uh, but but yeah. yeah, Ricky Starks, really good on the mic. Absolutely. I'm liking him more and more every time I see him on Again, TV. I wish they would, and maybe it's because he's not good at it, I wish they would let Cage speak, because he hardly mm-hmm. says anything. Um, Taz talked. He talked a little bit on uh, BTE, and he Is seemed he, fine. He yeah. ate 12 dozen eggs or something. <laughs> Plain with no salt or pepper. He's he lost, team. he jobbed out to the, the, uh, the skill crane. <laughs> so... They start to make their uh, – Starks and Cage make their entrance. But then out of nowhere, uh, just descending from the ceiling come, and drop. comes a coffin drop from our boy Darby Allen, who continues to be insane, uh, one of my favorite wrestlers. I, I don't super remember – I feel like because the beginning of this mm-hmm. match and the end of this match are so insane, mm-hmm. the middle bit just sort of happened. Not There's a bad, but – at some point, there's a trash can that gets thrown at people. Yeah, there's a trash can. Uh, uh, there was one botch. One botch where uh, Darby jumps out of the ring, mm-hmm. and Cage is supposed to catch him, but he drops him on the ground and picks him back up. But That did happen. Ricky Starks drops a trash can when it's thrown to him, which is why he's not uh, playing for the Jaguars and instead works for the other con business. <laughs> Sad. But... um. Yeah, uh, Cage's arm is focused a little more. I guess just calling back to that's always a thing. Mm. Uh, But eventually, uh, Ricky Starks is like sort of near one of the ropes. Yeah. And Darby Allen pulls out from under the (laughs) ring 
a skateboard with tacks on it. So he climbs up there. He he gets on his skateboard. He has to hit Ricky again once. Hmm? Ricky, you know, he starts getting up, but he has to hit him again. So he just leaned over and just, just does a sick ollie right onto his back. I don't actually know what an ollie is or anything about skateboards. But he lands the tack skateboard on Ricky's back. It's all real. And it, like, drags down his back, too. Yeah. So it just Which I don't think it was supposed to drag like that. Yeah, I, I have the feeling it was supposed to just land and mm. go. But it sort of skids on him. So it really scratches his back up. Ricky's um, clearly in real non tape pain. His leg is, like, spasming yeah. really bad. Um, so I hope he's good. Um, he said he was good on Twitter. Yeah, I hope he doesn't have permanent scarring. Um, he probably does, but they, that's two weeks in a row with tax. Also, yeah, maybe which was a little weird on AEW. We don't need. I mean, it's cool, but we don't need that every week. You can save maybe that for special maybe moments. like twice a year. Yeah, <laughs> just whenever Joey Janela's out there or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and he's barefoot. So obviously, after that catastrophe. Uh, Ricky Starks is tagged, which again, uh, I don't think it really means anyone loses here because, I mean, he got tax in his back. He's going to come out of that, and then Cage doesn't get pinned. Yeah. And I mean, I think he also, now that everyone knows wrestling isn't real, mm-hmm. everyone gained a lot of respect for him for taking that spot. Yeah, because that spot sucks. Yeah. No one wants that, except for whoever told them to do that. Except for Mick Foley. Except for Mick Foley and Darby Allen, I guess. And Joey Janela. But, again, in Tony Khan fashion, after Darby and Mox win the match, Darby points his half-broken tack skateboard (laughs) at uh, Mox. And Tony Khan goes, or Tony Schiavone says that Tony Khan has said that there's going to be a challenge challenge for the AEW championship. Darby is challenging Mox next Next week, week, I believe. So yeah. we'll see that coming up uh, again. Uh, we doubt that'll change hands, but yeah, could be good because we love Darby and Mox here. They're both good. The, Maybe it'll be some wild stuff. Should definitely be wild. Hopefully, no more tax. Um, yeah. Because God, please save these two boys. Uh, and that was the episode. Uh, they just and afterwards. Afterwards, they uh, announced they had signed Eddie Kingston. Yes, Eddie Kingston is now signed, which we're big fans of. Yeah. Maybe they a very good match. Now he's poor. Yeah. I thought his match with Cody was the best of the TNT title ones. Mm-hmm. I can remember. Although I remember the Jungle Boy one being very good. Really? But, All of them have been really – there hasn't been a yeah. bad one of those. Those have been consistently very, very good. Yeah. Um, which is weird. I wouldn't say Cody's, like, top performer for me, but I think he's very consistent, mm-hmm. like, pretty good. Yeah, and he he seeming he seemingly also does a good job at elevating whoever he's with. So mm-hmm. keep that up, Cody. Yeah, hey, boy. Um, turn heel finally. And finally, I can't wait any longer. Stop. Same with Kenny. Just do it. Just do something with it. But yeah, so that is the twenty ninth of July AW yep. uh, uh, Dynamite episode. Kylan, do you have the the predictions for next week? Oh, we should also mention We um, got them all right. We got them all. We're we're five and oh, both of us. Yeah. Because we, we predicted the same thing last week. Or for this We would be great bookers because we would have booked it the exact same way. We're heroes is yeah. basically what we're saying. AW hire us. Please. Please, that'd be really cool. I don't want to have to get a job. <laughs> so, Kylan, please right. tell us about the so, released card. The released card. AW World Title Match. Moxley versus Darby Allen. Moxley. Yeah. And that's I am also going to Mox. I think it's going to be close, but Moxley will come out. Yeah. Then, there is Matt Cardona and Cody versus... John Silver and Alex Reynolds in well, the Dark Order. Gonna have to say John Silvers. Woo! I'm gonna have to I say think... it turns into a six-man tag out of nowhere. No. Brandon Cutler 
and Peter Avalon come in and get the pins. Now that I would love. But yeah. yeah. Matt Cardone and Cody, sadly. That Not is, sadly, I love them, but Yeah. Alex Reynolds and John Silver, I'm liking them because of BTE. BTE, they're very funny. Yeah. Then the twelve man, the elite and FTR versus the Dark Order. I don't know. I feel like they have to give it to the Elite, but I want the Dark Order yeah. to win. Well, the thing, if the Dark Order wins, that would sow more discord mm-hmm. between the Elite. I'm going to go Dark Order. You're going Dark Order? I'm going Dark Order. Mm-hmm. Just because I think Dark Order lost the one this okay. past week. They're losing the first one next week. And they could give them a win getting a pin over one of the Young Bucks or something like that. Right. Or maybe... They go after Kenny or Hangman. It just leads to some tension just to continue that. I want to be a contrarian, but I really – I think you've convinced me Dark Order, so I'm going to have to go Dark Order. All right. We're always going to guess the same things. Our records will never be different. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, pay-per-views will guess different. Yeah. Especially when they have stuff like the ladder match with nine people. When are we going to do a pay-per-view, Kyle? Those are like five hours. <laughs> Real quick. Okay. Go through each match. Um, now, we can't really predict the winner of the Jericho Cassidy debate because that'll be uh, subjective, but it'll be Cassidy who obviously. talked more on BTE this week than normal. He, he uses fewer words to say more. Yeah, yeah. especially when he's killing Cole Cabana. Sad. Sad. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Best friends versus Santana and Ortiz. See, now that's one I think. Could go either way. Yeah, because Santana Ortiz haven't been getting wins recently. Right. And I, my heart, my mind says Santana or Ortiz, but my heart says best friends. Yeah, I am in a similar place. I'm going best friends, and I will always vote for the best friends. Okay, since you're going there, I'll go Santana Ortiz. Okay, I logically, I think it'll go Santana Ortiz. Well, but... my thought on that is. Best friends have won a lot recently, obviously. Mm-hmm. They had the tag title match. Santana and Ortiz, I thought one of them would take the pin last week. Right. They didn't. Uh, Jericho's already having his debate with Cassidy, which Cassidy's going to win. Obviously. So I think they got to give the uh, inner circle a win at some point. Although they yeah. gave him the six man, but. They'll never take it away from the best friend. The best friends are by far the greatest wrestling duo. That has ever been invented and that is true. Exist. Move over, Road Warriors <laughs> and DX. Those aren't even real people. The Hart uh, Foundation. All I, all I know, our best friend. Move over, Arn and Tully. You're old now. <laughs> um, there's also MJF's. Uh, he's going to give another update. Ooh, another speech. MJF will win that one. I predict that. Yeah, yeah. I assume there'll be a women's match, mm. but. Probably involving Sheeta, since I don't think she's in the tag tournament. Right. But it's not been announced. But if that happens, Sheeta's going to win. Yeah. So Does that count as a prediction, do you think? I don't think. They haven't officially announced one. so Because I assume they have more than four matches, because they usually have five. Yeah. So whatever unpredicted match will probably be pretty obvious. So, so we differ on the best friend Santana Ortiz match. Yeah. Cool. This is, we'll we'll yeah. have a different, different record. Unless it ends in a uh, draw, which has happened before. <laughs> which has happened before and would be very sad. It would be very funny, though. Win. Every time they're in the ring. Every time? Yes. I mean, Eddie Kingston could get involved because... He never will. Him and Santana Ortiz were apparently in a faction with Diamante back in Impact, I think. They could start that up. That's true. Yeah. So... I refuse. The best friends always win. The end. They won't have Orange there, though. He'll they have no loss. Busy. He'll be busy debating. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's everything. Yeah. For this episode of the on the <laughs> yet to be named wrestling podcast, which that may never be named. The name of it. Who knows? Uh, thank you for tuning in, friends and otherwise. This is and been- foes. And also, Kylan is here. That's true. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.